Hey everyone, hope you're all well and safe. Uh, welcome to this week's Photoshop edit walkthrough and this week we are walking through this image here. So there wasn't a natural reason for this image, it was more of a um, practice more than anything. Uh, obviously we're all suffering with uh, lockdown at the minute so I'm not being able to get out and use the camera so what I'm, I have been doing is just uh, using Adobe Stock and finding images and just uh, putting images together and seeing what I can come up with. So this was an image that I came up with a few weeks ago. So it's a three image composite so we have the girl the background and then the ropes at the front. So let's just jump it straight into the into the video. So as you can see this is uh, me selecting out the model. Uh, I use color select on this which um, I kind of wished I didn't in the end up just because I always have to go in and refine the selection afterwards and it's a pain. So next, uh, I would have, if I could do it again I would have just used the pen tool as it's, it's just always easier in the long run. As you can see here I've got lots of white haloing around the model um, and I had to also mask back in the stomach in that kind of area. So I mean Although sometimes we think these masking things are easier, they're just not. It's just easier to use pen tool and then use refined edge for the hair. So now the model's masked out. So this is uh, where I got the ropes from for the model, uh, for the image in the foreground. I didn't like the background of this image, it just looked too computer graphics or CGI or just too fake. But I did like the uh, the ropes and because I knew they would be in the foreground and blurred, they would look more realistic and probably not um, um, CG or computer graphics or whatever it is. So just me bringing them into layers. So this is the image here. So again, this is from Adobe Stock. Um, just the image of a gym so I just brought that into the layers panel moved it to the back behind the models then here I am using field blur so I'll just stop here so usually when I blur backgrounds I use I did use Gaussian blur um, which is quite a nice effect but uh, I got told by a friend that field blur um, that I should give it a try because it gives but it gives a more realistic blur to the to the images and I uh, and better bokeh and I believe it does actually after using it now a few times so uh, if you're using if you're trying to create depth of field within an image uh, I would suggest using field blur as Gaussian it just gives a better and more realistic blur than Gaussian blur so here we are this is just in the blur uh, interface so you've got iris blur tilt shift path blur spin blur so just using field blur and then once you've done it uh, selected what you want you can just press OK and it just take for some reason it takes a little bit longer to apply the effect as you can see here um, but it does give an overall better blur effect than Gaussian blur especially when you're trying to create depth of field so as you can see it takes quite a while um, I have actually upgraded the RAM in my computer since since uh, doing this because I just didn't want to wait that long uh, for the blur, um, I now have 32 gigabytes of RAM, which has sped things up a little bit more than in this. So what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm applying a field blur also to the to the ropes at the front again to create depth of field. We want the model, the only sharp thing in this image. So it's like we've got a a, a camera with a uh, open lens, so you're shooting at one point. Uh, 8 or 2.4 or whatever and you get the everything's blur apart from your subject so what I'm doing now as well is bringing some behind the model again just to create realism in the scene there would be ropes behind the model not just in front of her so here we go, so this is what I'm on about, so if I would, if I had used the pen tool to begin with I wouldn't have had all these uh, white halos and fringing around the model, so I had to go in and then using a brush and uh, 
on the layer mask because we're working non-destructive just paint away all these halos and refine the mask whereas if I would have used pen uh, yes pen tool in the beginning I wouldn't I wouldn't have had to go in and do all this so the the actual creation of the image would have been a lot quicker so I'm just going around the hair I actually think this took the most time out of everything in the whole image so it shows what happens when you try and cut corners in the beginning it adds up checks to work later on Going around and blurring the edges a little bit as well. As you can see, it's only slight, but it does make a difference. In the eye, does seem to pick up on it as well, especially when there's contrast like the darker uh, areas at the bottom. As you can see, there's like this halo here as well. It's quite big here, so it is a it is a pain. And just a reminder my to myself to use the pen tool straight away instead of cutting corners. Let's just zoom through this a little bit as this spent quite a lot of time doing this again, still just going through and cleaning everything up. Again, now going over the hair, doing the same thing. Again, just going over the halos. And it even left some halos around the image here as well, which is nowhere near the model. Again, just cleaning up the hair and all these hairs here. Obviously we are zooming right in there, so the further out we are, the, the harder it is to see these discrepancies but you can still see them. So what I'm doing now is on a blank layer I'm just painting in some uh, glow to the lights behind the model. On colour dodge and screen blend mode. Now again creating some more glow around from the windows in the background as well just using linear dodge on a, on a blank layer. I like to I like stylized images and I like it when cinematic images where the model is um, lit from the back behind windows or lights you get this glow obviously the, um, if there was no light at the front there would be in shadow here but we have to take liberties in these stylized images and I was just playing around with adding this color of the lights into the highlights on the model Again, all using blend modes and just painting in with a brush. And now going over the outside of the of the selection again. Now what I'm doing here is just using overlays, overlays, and just bringing them in. As uh, as you do with most overlays, you just put them on screen blend mode, and the dark part disappears, and you have to just the light left, and you can bring, move them around anywhere in your image and use them for glows and. Uh, light leaks and all those kind of effects in the image which I again like to use and like them I like a good stylized image so what I'm doing now is just a little bit of dodge and burn on the model using a curves dodge and burn so that's just dodging the highlights and darkening the shadows creating contrast uh, which which in turn you can add more detail to the image or you can add more depth to an image add form to the face whether you use it wrong can also make the face look a little bit deformed so you just practice makes perfect with dodge and burn again now we're finding the selections still noticing areas where the selection just didn't do a very good selection the select uh, color select. So if you've learned one thing from this image, it is do not cut corners of selections. You might as well just do the hard work first. Adding some more overlays onto the lights. Okay. 
again, cleaning up selections. It's pretty much most of this image was <laughs> cleaning up selections which could have been bypassed in the beginning. So as you can see it's actually quite an easy 3-4 image composite. Cleaning up selections. Now I did some dust particles in the air. Sometimes when you have uh, light streaks coming in, you get the little dust flares in the in the lens. Again, this is mainly for styling. Or sometimes it does add a little bit of realism to the image. Now I'm just color grading. Again, gradient map. I always use gradient map for coloring. For the final colour grade, and I usually mix that with selective colour as you can see there, just adding a little bit of colour into the blacks. And in this image, I added red into the darks, and I used like a gold colour for the colour grade, so selecting like a dark yellow for the shadows, then a mid tone yellow for the mid tones, and then I left the highlights white. Again, I was just um, cleaning up the outline of the model, now adding some more lens flare in. Now finishing the image off with Luminar 4.2, so I've been using this a lot, this is a plugin that you can use to finish your images, so I, in this image I used it for the dramatic look filter, so you, I apply the dramatic filter, come back into Photoshop, lower the opacity, and it just pulls out the darks and adds some more detail to the image like so. Um, I will leave some links underneath this video, so you can try out Luminar for free, or purchase of it if you want. Um, but yeah, so this is the final image. If it wasn't for all that um, refining of the mask from earlier, this image would have been actually pretty quick. But it's nice to walk through these, Im these images and show the process. So I hope you've enjoyed this. It's been a short walkthrough this week. Please feel free to hit me up in the comments or on social media. Thanks, guys. Peace.